So coffee begins with the bean, right? The harvest. The harvest. Well, I guess the growing, but right now we're getting into the harvesting season. Um, this is pretty early for the season, but we're starting to get a little bit of ripening here. You can see the red fruit, mm -hmm. the Kona coffee cherry. Um, the scientific name of the Kona coffee tree is Arabica variety typica. There's a lot of different varieties and species, or there's a couple species and a lot of varieties. Um, Arabica is the species, and within that species is variety typica. Um, the main characteristic is that it grows kind of lanky, so it's limber when you want to do hand picking. All of Kona is hand picked. So you can pull the tree down if you need to pick the top. And out here on the end, the new growth has kind of a brownish tint on the leaf. That's the main characteristic for the typica. So I say the tip leaf has kind of a brownish tint. And inside the fruit, normally you have two beans, and that's the seeds of the tree. So if you're to take one off and you pop them out, we have a machine that does this on a faster, oop, they're slippery too. So yeah. there's one bean and it's a half, see how it has a flat side? Yeah. Most coffee that you get has a flat surface on one side because two of them are growing inside the fruit. And they're covered in a sugary juice and it actually tastes really good. Feel free to pick one and taste it. Uh, the first step will be cleaning and drying these beans, and uh, once they're dry, you can store it. There's also um, occasionally about 5% of the crop only has one bean inside, and it grows rounded. That's the pea berry. And very cool. Now, you can eat these things just straight out? I wouldn't eat the whole bean. I would just taste the juices. I mean, feel free and it's chew on fun. it. It won't hurt you, but it doesn't taste the best when you actually eat the bean. Okay. It's kind of grassy. Very cool. Very cool. All right, so we get it off the tree, mm -hmm. right? And I've seen it goes into a bag, Thanks. right? And then it goes up the hill. Yeah, so you pick it. Um, normally, someone who's uh, picking by hand will have a grapple or a hook with a rope attached to, to hold the tree down so they, okay. can, they can hold it down with their foot and have two free hands to pick. Mm -hmm. They'll have a small basket. And then from there, they'll either fill up a, a bucket and once the bucket's full, pour that into a burlap bag. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, that's usually the best way to do it. That's awesome. We're off to the next station. I actually got the whole family involved. Reagan's over there helping to pick berries, Bryce. And uh, this is your husband, Brooke, right? Yes. What's your name? Grant. Grant? I'm Rick. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. Hey, <laughs> thanks, Grant. I appreciate you guys doing this. This is pretty darn cool. So. Anyway, they're gonna pull some of these ripe cherries off, and uh, and your son's here. What's what's your name, little man? What's his name? Gavin. Gavin. Okay, and Gavin's four. And your other son? This is Owen. Owen. Here, Gavin and, and, and Owen. You want a bean? All right. You want a cherry? Yeah, no. Great. Cool. We've got the whole family going on here. That's Do you want to see all the coffee they take? Yeah. Whoa, what's going on? Oh, that would be sweet. That would be sweet. Are you excited? <laughs> yeah. You can only pick the red ones. Yeah. yeah. This, this, is, this tree got a little taller than the normal one. Normally they keep it pruned. I was wondering about that because I've, I've, heard, I've never heard of coffee trees being this tall. They can grow to be up to 40 feet, really? but you don't let them. You prune them. You never prune all your trees at one time. Okay. Or you won't have a crop. Oh, they're falling. Coffee beans everywhere. So they can hold it down if someone else wants to pick it. I'm going to let it help pick. I'll pick. All right, so we just got to make sure I get picked with just the, the red ones, right? Yeah. All right. That's cool. Look so at all the beans I got. Wow. You want some? Mm. You're not going to take one? We have a family express we see all the whole time. Well, it seems some big bunches over here. Yeah. That's awesome. Look at that. The pea berry, it's a lopsided fruit. So if you hold your hand up, it's going to be a. But hold it more flat. Sure. See how this one didn't develop? Yep. So this bean is rounded, and that's the pea berry. And then when you get a pea berry, the other bean, it's because the other bean didn't really develop. Yeah. Yep. Right there. 
So then, but you've got a really nice big one over here, so that will be good when you... Well, yeah, so the pea berry is a rare bean, and it's only 5% of the crop. Some people like it better, some people don't like it at all, some people um, don't, can't tell the difference. But um, I've done, I've experimented, and I think, like, in my opinion, the pea berry is stronger, like, tasting. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's denser, so if you use the same amount of grounds uh, for it with a pea berry, as you do regular bean, the pea berry is going to taste like you use more grounds, even though you use the same amount. This is awesome. This is awesome. Hey, I'm learning a li little bit here and, and uh, seeing some stuff I've never seen before. I'm off on a dive adventure. What's up with that? Pretty cool. Uh, most of the coffee you'll you'll see that uh, we buy from from the individual farmers, mm -hmm. uh, they'll be um, like ha half the size of these beans just because we're such a high elevation, the beans uh, have a chance to, to grow. Yeah, well it was amazingly, Trent was told he couldn't even grow coffee here, yeah. or it was suggested that he didn't. And now it's one of the most successful yeah. farms and uh, uh, successfully run family farms in the region, so. I would say the majority of this coffee is uh, extra fancy, which is probably the best, is the best bean you can that comes out of the, the coffee. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Now, this is another uh, part of the plantation here, or farm, organically grown, and there's a there's a business end to the, to the other side here, right? This is the, the composting. Oops, what? What's going on? It's perfectly fine. Oh, <laughs> it's plastic. It's perfectly fine. I, well, mom said it was not okay. Okay, so the business end over here, I'm not gonna describe what happens here, but it's composted, okay? And this guy has a, had, well, many, many years ago, this guy had a purpose, and this is part of the nightingale fleet, right? This yeah, is this is a miniature nightingale. A miniature. Okay, miniature nightingale. Tattoo. His name is Tattoo. And uh, right now, they're, they're out here on the farm is kind of uh, pets, right? Yeah, so this is Tattoo, Menahuni, they're pets. They help with the weeds. Okay. And then uh, they just kind of free range within the orchard. And so whatever they eat helps us, so we don't have to go weed whack it or hand pull it. And also their poo becomes good for the soil. Right. That's awesome. And it's also part of the history of this island that we're going to cover later with the article. So the, the nightingales, this, this breed of donkey, was here and part, used part of the commerce of uh, the big island here. The coffee plantations, growing the beans, taking the beans to market, and eventually becoming the money and the trade that founded all the commerce here on the island. So, very, very cool thing. I've learned a lot in just a, just a few days. So, uh, we're gonna continue the, the tour and they're gonna try to fill my head with knowledge, if that's possible. This is our pick for now. We spent about 10 minutes, you know, just all together off this one tree. And we got a good amount of cherry. So we're gonna go process this and show you each step of the way it gets to roasting. All right, these are the beans that we picked a few minutes ago, and now we're gonna take it up to the next station. And this is part of the family run operation. There's two sides of it. One is a small side, which we're gonna do it for the short run season, small small runs, right? When your guys are in the off season. Yeah, right? so this is the pulper, okay. and this whole area is generally called the wet mill, because we use water to move the fruit around. At this point, we don't, we're not worried about keeping it dry. Um, so if we have hundreds or thousands of pounds coming through, we use a pump and water. And then there's ones that float, those are lower quality. We skim those off with this, uh, what do you call it, strainer. And then we do those separate. The pump right there will come up this pipe and we'll bring the fruit up into this pulper. So when it's running, it's spinning. I'll turn it on real quick. Okay, no worries. Okay, we turn on some water so we can keep the coffee moving with the water. Hundred pounds or a 
thousand pounds. But if we have lots and lots of coffee, we usually use a big system, which is taken apart right now. The beans have come out of here. They've got rid of the pulp, the uh, pulp around the bean, the cherry, right, separated from the fruit. Now we've got just beans sitting in water. The water they're going to sit here for 15 to 18 hours, right? Or so on a good day, mm -hmm. and just kind of take separating the uh, the sugar from the bean. Yeah, right. just like overnight's fine. Like say if you are picking all day, then you pull up in the afternoon, you let your beans soak overnight, and maybe um, put them out to dry the next day. Okay, there you go. And uh, we're taking the beans from over there where they came through. We uh, took the pulp off of them. We waited, separated the sugars. Now they're going to go in the shaker. But he's gonna go in the wheelbarrow. And having a farm, I know something about wheelbarrows. So, anyway, that's what we're doing. We're shaking. I'm guessing at least half of the coffee that we picked got stuck in the system because it was a small amount. Yep. But uh, this is a little bit that you know, we came out on the other end and put it out to dry. All right. We got a couple of bigger batches over here that, that are a little bit more dry. So okay. We can break them. Try the beans at this point. Uh, it's just over about 11% moisture. Okay. That could take anywhere uh, from three days to a week. Okay. Depending on how sunny it is. Alright. Um, if you're brave enough, you might bite down on it. Yeah, if it's hard, then it's close to being dry, you probably want to measure it. Okay. If you have a uh, moisture. And if it's still soft, you know it's nowhere near being close. Okay. Wait. It's warm in here. It's soft. Just imagine the whole deck full of uh, beans out to dry, and then see every hole in the deck and it goes down to a mechanical dryer. Okay, great. So now we're on to the next day. step. Brooke's going to tell me what happens next. All right. So we just came from the wet mill and we made parchment over there. So after the coffee was processed, so it's sun dried, it's called parchment. And we're over here to take the second skin off. So what we do is we bring thousands of pounds over here and we actually put the coffee into the ground. It's a very easy way to not lift thousands of pounds of coffee. Right. The coffee goes in the ground, shoots up the elevator, slides down the green pipe, and the skin comes off in the box right there. From there, all the coffee is put into a hopper and we wait till we have about 3,000 pounds of green bean and then we're going to grade it by size, weight, and color. So once you've taken the skin off the parchment bean, it's now called a green bean. It is now worth twice as much money, and we're now going to grade it by size, weight, and color. Okay, cool. Okay, so now that we've taken the skin off and it's now a green bean, we're going to grade it by size. So from that elevator, it gets shot into a large elevator up here. We hold about 3,000 pounds. It then falls down into the shaker. When this is on, it's shaking and moving, and the beans are bouncing. And every metal slab that you see right here is a different screen size, and the beans just fall down depending on their size. And right here we have a mini example of what it might look like. If you put beans up here and you shook it, beans would fall to the different screen sizes. And so, from here, we're going to grade it by density. So we want a large, dense green bean. Now we figured out what our large beans are. Now we're going to find the most dense beans of those large beans. Okay, so from here, we take each size individually and we will do the most dense beans at every single grade or size. So when this machine is on, it's shaking and moving and the beans are bouncing. So the beans come out down here. The bigger the bean, the more it weighs, the bigger it bounces. So the okay. bigger we, beans actually divide gravity and bounce upward. The biggest beans fall down into the blue tray, and the smaller beans come downward towards us. And when you have an okay grade of coffee, you'll probably have a good amount of color defects. So you can actually see the color defects falling downward. And that is because naturally, lower end coffee has more color defects. Okay. And from here, we, we either color sort it, get it certified by the state, or roast it. So we'll go take a look at the color sorter. Now at the color sorter, it's a big computer, so there's not a lot to see, but it really does a lot. So we took all that effort to get extra fancy, which is the highest end bean. If we leave color defects on it, it's not going to taste as good as it could. So we can have yellow, black, brown, and white beans, and we don't want any of that. We want a large, dense green bean. So this computer is going to go through every single bean individually and color sort it. So when it's on, you can hear it going, duh, 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 and it's just one bean going through at a time. There's a good pipe and a bad pipe. The bad pipe goes into a bag. The good beans actually go through the system again and again because it's not 100% accurate, and we just keep running it until we get what we're looking for. And of course, dirtier coffee will take longer, and you can actually tell the machine what to look for. So if you notice in that batch of coffee, there was maybe more black beans, you can tell it to be more sensitive to black beans. Okay, that's awesome.
and now for sure we're going to roast it or sell it to another country or have the state certify it. Right, but then that you've got different great beans. We do. Sure. Well, there's extra fancy, fancy, number one, select, and prime. So we keep extra fancy and fancy for ourselves. Right. We roast it and sell it as Mountain Thunder. The off grade we sell to large companies or brokers or countries. Awesome. So now we're going to go roast the coffee, and that's the most fun part. This is the next step in the process, and this uh, cup's still empty. We've been following this for a long time so far, but this we're getting pretty close, right? We're almost there. Okay, almost there. So now we're going to put the beans in to the roaster. Yes. Right? Which so it's getting warm, so let's okay. put it up there. Put your cup down. Oh, okay, I got to help. All right. <laughs> so put the coffee into right. the hopper. Okay. And you want to lift this up, and it's going to put the coffee directly into the drum, and we'll be able to watch it start roasting. Okay. All right, it's in there. Yeah, this is a great shot. You can see how the beans are green, and over the next 15 minutes, a lot of development's going to happen. Within this window, you can see it's going to kind of white out, and then it will go to a nice autumn color, and it's not to the very end that it really starts to look like beautiful, nice coffee. Mm -hmm. And that process is about 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So we're at about 360 degrees right now and we're hitting our first crack. So the beans are actually going to double in size and they're developing right now. If they didn't crack, they're, they wouldn't be cooked and the inside would be raw and it would not taste good. So if you actually can hear it. Yep, I can hear it. It's a lot like popcorn. It's gonna go real crazy and then slow down, and we'll hit that second crack again at our medium roast when we're gonna drop it. I want you to take home a medium roast. Medium roast is what we call a Vienna roast. It's smoother and has more caffeine. Yeah. It's what Kona tastes good at if you have good coffee. You know, is that the award that you won? You the uh, uh, Brewmaster Award? Is it, is yes, that award we use this, this roaster, and we roasted this, actually the same coffee, okay. and we won. Well, what about you won one as well? You personally have won a one award, didn't you? I got that right? Well, which one? Okay. We've never lost a contest. We've entered, entered lots of contests. So okay. we won every small contest in town. Okay. And we last year we won the Good Food Awards. This year we won the Canadian Award. And then just yesterday we won top three in Hawaii. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. So you can see the coffee's already changing. Not a lot, you know, it's only been a little bit. We dropped the coffee in, it was at 400 degrees. Right. The coffee's very, very cold. So it actually dropped the roaster temperature down to the hundreds. All right, I'm gonna drop it now. Okay, we're at 430 degrees. We're at a perfect medium roast. Open it up. Open it up. The most exciting part about being here on the farm is roasting the coffee. Yeah, there's a harvest, yeah, for sure. all the same color and that is what you want with coffee. If you're buying coffee and you have all different sized beans and it's not an even roast, you should maybe go shopping somewhere else. So I bet everybody watching wishes they could have a cup of this. <laughs> but no, it's yeah, all actually, for them. Actually they can. All they have to do is click on the website and come over and do an internet order with you. They can have this very, very same kind of coffee, right? Yeah, or you can come up and do your own roast master with me personally. Absolutely. I would recommend that. It's a great method. Oops. I'm never going to do this professionally, am I? No, I feel like I can teach anybody. Yeah, I'm proof that I can only be, be, be taught. Your coffee looks pretty nice to me, but you did have me. That's right, I have a roast man. Can I get her off? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Looks good. Why doesn't everybody take a look? If you only had smell-o-vision, 